We'll call to order the June 23rd, 2022 City Commission meeting. Everyone, please rise for the flag salute. Thank you. 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 Thank
we're pursuing those as well. I know we're going to meet with them in the next few weeks, but I want to make sure we exhaust all avenues of funding because we're, we're talking 60 plus million dollars over the next 10 years Most to do this work. So, um, yeah, and you're right. There's uh, there's been funding available directly from the federal government as well as from the state. So, and there's probably going to be more uh, because with the infrastructure bill, they're still prioritizing things. Mm -hmm. So you're, you right. make a good point. Uh, there's there is probably going to be other avenues that we can pursue. Good. And uh, we, we're kind of putting the foundation together now so that whatever funding is available, we have all the environmental uh, assessment completed, we have all the costs completed, and we have you know a plan to move forward. Good. Yeah. Thanks. Um, and and that's really it. The other any other project that we worked on uh, with the city is the uh, environmental or the uh, uh, energy savings plan, uh, which we're all aware of, uh, and that that. Uh, Helps to fund um, the the uh, retrofitting of the streetlights throughout the city, as well as improvements uh, in city buildings and also uh, electric vehicle charging stations and, and the like. So, I think that you said today. I think we're hoping to start the roof on the public works building in the fall, right? Hope to. So. That'd be nice. That's Just a long time along. coming. Yep, it's a long time coming. If there are what any questions, I'd be happy to answer. What was our total? About four and a half million. Uh, that we have under under wrap so far. Yeah, the total is about four point one million. Four point one. Yep, two point nine from DOT and about one point two from FEMA. And that's over a period of time. The last uh, three to four years. Three to four years. Yes. And uh, first of all, I want to thank you. I mean, this is a lift, four million lift that would is, is helping take some of the steam uh, to get done. And you've been doing this since two thousand sixteen for the city. We've been doing this. Longer than that. Longer than that. <laughs> oh, yeah. I've done this for almost every municipality. <laughs> right. And, and Cape May County, too. Yeah. So. Right. And I got to say, it's it all straight. He's like, for our administration. It's a, it's a team effort. I mean, you don't do this by yourself. Yeah. If you don't have the right information, you can't move forward. So, you know, we work with you know, your finance office, your administrator, engineering, public works, it really, fire department in some right. places. Uh, it really does take everybody. And if you don't get the right information, you don't win the prize. So, yeah. <laughs> Right. It's important. No, I appreciate the, the I see, uh, you know, forwarding the emails to the different departments that can try to work with them within the parameters of each grant that you bring mm -hmm. us to us. So it's, it's, a, it's a big lift. We appreciate it. Thank you. Jim, do you and, happen to have a rolling total since, since this administration, since you've been with them of grants? Uh, well, I mean, the 4.1 million is Back since to, 2019. Okay. So it's. Oh, okay. Yeah. Got it. And, and there's pollinator plants coming. That's true. Yeah. And they're free. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't mention those. <laughs> but that's a neat that's you know, community one. effort. Oh, and it's, yeah. Yeah. It's uh, got a lot of interest. Yeah. yeah. And uh, hopefully there'll be more for Bettner West. Uh, ah, you know, we're working, we've been working on that as well. Great. Hope so. Good. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. Good seeing you again. Uh, we're not doing our department head reports tonight, are we? I yeah. see Jimmy here, but you're here for another reason, right? Airbnbs, right? So no capital discussion at this point. Um, so the following items are scheduled for action this evening. In the regular portion of our commission meeting, we're going to approve minutes from both regular and executive sessions from May 12th, May 26th. We're going to pull June 9th. Correct. Because Commissioner Kriegel is not here. And I can't. Right. Both of that stuff. Right, so we're going to pull that. One. We have some ordinance, no inter ordinance introductions, or we have the potential of ordinance introduction if we go with the mark. That's when we're going to wait till next month, right? That's correct. Okay, we're going to wait on that. Okay, we're going to discuss it tonight, and then we'll come back with it yeah. next month. Good. So no introductions, but we do have looks like three public hearings and adoption of ordinances. If I can just circle back to the that. I, uh, there was a lot of interest on the one that we're going to work, rework on overnight parking. Yes. Um, we're, we just had some late changes on it. There's definitely some people that were interested in it and contacted me. Um, we're trying to make it more comprehensive. Agreed. Yep. So um, we just need a little more time and we'll, we'll, uh, 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 um, we'll introduce a new ordinance and adopt it. Okay, good. Yes, we're going to pull 12, 2022-012. Uh, we're going to pull that one. We'll revamp it. Right. I agree. We even talked a little yeah. bit about yeah. uh, the size of the trucks and different things, and the number of them, too, is an issue. 
Yeah, and the wording that it is for a commercial purpose, which would exclude large SUVs. Correct. That are not okay. for a commercial purpose. So that, gotcha. that, that takes that out of the mix. But there's other things that we're trying to limit to make it more comprehensive and in the spirit of what is being sort of uh, we want to try to avoid, which is um, uh, commercial vehicles being left in overnight during. Agreed. So, Agreed. And, and trailers we might deal with separately with separate ordinances kind of preventing it from construction. All right, good. So we're going to pull that one. But the first one we're going to have a public hearing on and adoption would be 2022-010. And that is our pool construction dewatering amendment to our chapter 47 sewer and water utility. What happens now when someone has to dewater a lot for a pool is they pump it into the street through a siltation bag, but it just goes into the street and down to the storm drains. Um, we're going to now force them to do that into a sanitary sewer manhole and they will meter that and pay for the, the gallons they put into our system. Um, if you recall, we had some residents concerned about yeah. the water running down there constantly. Yeah. You know, it's been dry for seven, eight days and they got water in their gutter. Right. So we're going to try and eliminate that. Next, any, any more questions on that? 2022-011 is uh, cleaning up the alcoholic beverages for like Airbnb, not Airbnb, just BYOB. BYOB. Um, and outdoor restaurants where they can have alcohol on the sidewalks and allows that mm -hmm. in certain areas within the city. 2012, we're going to pull. And 2022-013 is uh, fire department fees. And the chief gave a real good explanation of that at our last meeting. Okay. Handles uh, yes. fees for varying services in the fire department. Yeah. Consistent with other communities. It's still less than a lot of communities. Right. Consistent with, with many of them. Bring it out to date. Yep. Resolutions. We'll do these by consent. The first is 2022-210. And that is... American Rescue Plan Firefighter Grant from New Jersey Department of Community Affairs to $75,000 ask for firefighter gear. Um, again, I think Jim Mattella helped us with that as well as the chief and always a good way to pay for things. Good with that one? Yeah, absolutely. 2022-211 is authorizing the hiring of Michael Anthony. No, I'm going to butcher that now. Basako. No way. There's too many letters in that. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, he's going to be in our tax collector office. Uh, we welcome Aunt Michael Anthony to the uh, to the fold there. The next one is 2022-212, and that is the authorization of fireworks display for the city of Ventnor on July 3rd. It'll be after our fun run. Commissioner Creeble is going to run in. That's right. Not sure how much fun it's going to be for him, but. <laughs> We might, we might pay someone to run alongside that whole mile if we just videotape that. Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I was reading through this and I, I think it's a great idea to, we have a rain date and we have the rain date as our national night out. Night out yeah. So that, that's awesome. If, if we have to cancel that, that night, we got a, a good rain date. So it really turned into a great event. There's going to be combined with uh, concerts and the, yep. the run. Um, so it's starting, uh, I guess, around six six o'clock yes. and then running until dusk when that fireworks happens so it's kind of a bonus night it is the, yeah for for fireworks that night. it'll be nice and i appreciate and no one else in the area is doing no. fireworks that night. no there's a lot of coordination in the back with maria and, and police fire definitely police and fire we have a whole strategy of how they're going to um shut off the sidewalks and where where the actual charges are going to be set from and distances okay. and insurance fees that have to be done so yeah, so right. It's a it's a very well laid out plan. Resolution two twenty or two thirteen is authorizing enforcing no parking within the city from July first through September thirtieth for very special events. Any questions on that? That's standard. We kind of pass that each summer. Right. Uh, resolution two one four is revocable license agreement concerning property at one eighteen North Dudley Avenue. Block 115, lot, lot 16. This is for stairs, as I recall, at the front entrance stairway. And we were okay with that. I know you presented to us last week and we were last month, and we were okay. Any questions there? No, I saw, I saw the paperwork. 
Resolution is 215, is extending the grace period for third quarter taxes, and that's something we typically do out each year. We don't anticipate the state have a budget, so right. we have a good life statute. We have to have 25 days before a mail in. So we have to okay. 16 is awarding a contract for water meters to core and main LP for an amount not to exceed $14,310. And that's for our water meters as we replace them in the city um, uh, going forward. We typically buy them each year, right, Ernie? Resolution 217 is awarding nine fire hydrants to Katarina Supply Inc. for an amount not to exceed $32,445. Again, it's a continuing process, kind of a partnership with the fire department. When they tell us they got a problematic fire hydrant, and we go to replace those, put more modern ones up that provide the flows and easy access that, that you guys need. Uh, you guys, your guys. Need. Right. Um, resolution 218, authorizing a refund of recreation fees to Michael P. Wolfgang, the Down Beach Surf Camp. It's not have been able to attend. 219 is authorizing seasonal employment for city of Venton and Public Works Recreation Department. This is for the summer camp. Uh, to hire the hire the staff that we need for that each year. And then we're adding 220. Adding 220 is resolution that would hire three summer, basically beach sanitation employees. Joe Calvi, Mike Batanza, and Anthony Calava, um, all starting. They already started, so I guess, as of June 6th and 13th, for each of those guys to start at a, at a rate of $13 per hour. Now, we've had these guys have been on the beach before, right? These all new. Okay, good. We'll do our bills and payroll. It's presented by Al. Uh, discussion items. I know we have a few things to discuss tonight. I know I have a couple. And go through those mm -hmm. okay with that i think while we have jimmy here we want to talk about our short-term rentals okay um, everybody calls airbnb or, or brbo or whatever you want to call them um been some concern voiced by not only staff but also residents that we're getting a lot of one months um, that's not really what we had anticipated we wanted to see it more they're coming here for the weekend they're coming here to stay eating our restaurants shop in our stores and do that. They're coming for one night, they're going to a concert in Atlantic City. Not, we're not getting any benefit out of it as a community. Right. Um, or, or they're hosting one night parties, which we don't want those either. So we're, the suggestion is a three night minimum. Mm -hmm. um, that gets them here for a good amount of time. They're gonna use our, our facilities here in the city. They're gonna to go to our stores, go to our restaurants, we hope. Right. And, and enjoy Benton Beach and whatever we can. I've had the same similar complaints from both from neighbors about the one night. Yep. And I, I think it's in line, a three nights minimum is in line with the type of character that we're trying to sure. create. So I, I think it's a good, uh, it's, a, it's a good way to sort of mitigate those one night parts. Okay. And what I think we can do, and then Jim and Mark, you can help us out with this is in the, you know, as we amend the ordinance, you know, these guys get commercial license. We don't do CO inspections on each of these guys as they flip over. That's my understanding, right? Just once a year. But what will happen is if we get a complaint that, hey, you had one person in, we, we pulled a mercantile right. and then they get fined. Right. And they're not in compliance with their, their mercantile yeah. license. So, uh, some accountability. There is some accountability on it. You're saying maybe two nights instead of the three? Not a bad thought. I can get that Thursday night out of it. <laughs> um, thoughts on that? I, I mean, I think the three night is what most, most other. That's what I've seen. I've not I've seen, seen the one or two nights in places that do restrict. Right. There, there's towns that don't allow it at all. But it's a good point. I mean, if you're going down, so you're not necessarily staying Sunday night. True. You want to get it kind of in the move. I don't want to yeah. wait too much on this. No, we would go on. But um, maybe we can get Maria. Maybe you can talk to Beth and see what her thoughts are on it. Okay. We're not we're not adopting it tonight, so we would be able to change it for next month. One to two months. 
we can do a little more research. You know, if you have, any, you have any data on that, did anything? It's a week. Jim, see if you can talk into that mic. You can't, it's not being heard. Yeah, I think Margate was a week minimum. Uh, enforcement isn't going to be too easy with this. You know what I mean? It's probably no. going to be more or less on a complaint basis. Exactly. It will be. And then, uh, and then that particular right. order will know. And, and I believe that we're, we're going to have to get, and it's going to be an enormous amount of work, each time you put somebody in there, you're going to have to email us or notify us of the list of people that's in there so we could keep track and enforce it. Yeah, that's going to be. No, I, I already know it's going to be to enforce it. Yeah, I think, look, this is how it came to our attention. Right. The neighbors in, in the immediate neighborhood, they're going to tell us. That's it, I right. get the complaints. But yeah, but then get... still though, to verify the names and then to verify, you know, that now if we have somebody new in there, right, as a process, there would be, yeah. But I think that's, you know, show us the contract, and you know, we want to see the contract. Well, that's what I'm saying. We're yeah. going to have to receive all this document. But I think that's only when there's a complaint. I don't think you're going to have to get it on each one. Yeah, right. You wouldn't have to get it on each. I don't. I don't. I don't want to create that that ball of wax that yes. you've got to do it on each one. You are creating. It. Well, <laughs> but, uh, but only if, when there's a complaint. So we send out a mailer to everybody who has a license and everybody gets a mercantile license for short term rentals. And we tell them, look, you've got to do minimum, minimum stage, whether it's two or three nights on the right side. You're going to, and we're going to enforce it. Here's the fines. If you don't, you pull your mercantile, you can't rent anymore. And there's a suspension of your license. Yeah. Why do you think that they need to be tracked each time? Each rental? Just to, to enforce it. Like I said, well, you complain. Right. Now, now we got to go through the process of receiving that documentation instead of already having it. Right. But I mean, if we give them notice when they make the application, every time a new American bill is offered, they know that this is for correct short term rental. They know right. now that they now know that it's a two day or three day rental. Yep. And just like in the police force, we can buy complaint. If, if there is a complaint for one particular repeat offender for that minimum of limiting that minimum usage and that that's when you would say well you have send us the documentation for that rent. Not, not every time because that would be we have to we have over 300 airbnbs times 50 weekends so that's all that's too much that's too much to yeah. track so I, I would i agree with you yeah, we're not we're not going after the people that are doing the rentals or renting the place. We're going after the owners of the property. So all we need all we have to have is that mercantile license. And let, let's let's continue the conversation, but I do want to get this on the agenda for adoption in July. Sure. So it's in place for the rest of the summer. But um, I'm we'll talk about that part of it a little more. But I, I think I don't know that I want to have them each time they change over. To have to notify you so now the adoption in july you're talking like the end of july it's two readings so first and second reading to the end of july it would, it would really go into play in august so there's no limitation right now no yeah. we, we're getting one night right yeah i mean you can rent more than that there's right. no you're not really if you're under if you're more than 30 days you're not a short term right. we, we made that definition that's the Right, definitely. So, we reach out to Margate to see what they're. They don't allow anything less than seven. Than seven, yeah, that seems to work. I, I was, I was thinking too. You give, you give, change of tenants once a week. So if it's four days, then three days you don't rent. If it's for Friday and Saturday, you don't get nobody in there until next Friday. Right. Let's, let's reach out to our contacts and Mar Margate see how that works for them. I mean, it's yeah. working. You know. Yeah. I mean, I think, I, I also think that you might, I, I don't know that I agree. I think you, you see when I, when I ran Airbnbs, I see those off weekends, those off days are also booked. Those, you know, the weekends are always booked solid in resort towns, yeah. but those three days that are not it's cheaper, yeah. it's cheaper. They get filled mm -hmm. you know, by people who can work it out. Yeah. All right. so I think I, we have a little bit more. I, and I personally would like to wait 
until the end of August and get through summer because it's the right change now, midstream is hard. And right to get host compliance to change their paperwork. Okay. You know what I mean? To where uh, I have some changes right now to where December it expires. By December 31st, you must comply. Right. You know what I mean? Like, do more or less. It's at the end start, of the year. Is the right. Starting start when things. we send out the new applications. Okay. Right. And that way, that everything's clear. All right. I'm, I'm, I think I'm okay with that. I think so, too. I can. Right. You probably got all, you probably got all of this booked up already. From the investor's point of view. That's yeah. right. Yep. You can't, you'd be, you'd be almost breaching some of those. Right. This free, this free order. I, I agree. All right. So discussion. Yep. That's what it's for. To continue. Yep. <laughs> um, stepping back when I missed the first item is the community. Right. Right now, it's really not open to the public to use other than the county senior program. Right, Right. Correct. The city has used it um, sometimes itself, but it's a responsible for it. Right. In accordance with the protocol. Right. That's the issue, and then it has to be put back into the way in the staff. Yes, yeah, so the issue we're having is the cable. cost of, of the cleaning of it. Mm -hmm. COVID protocols require us to clean it, and it's five to eight hundred bucks, depending on. Yeah. It was five hundred bucks. I don't think it's that much. When we first when we first started it, maybe that's what I'm in the we've middle. Been, we've been doing months. we've been doing ours. So okay. We have to. We have to so we're we're getting a lot of requests right. from groups to come in there and, and, and use it. Yeah. Um, well, so we have the seniors in there, and the place, the senior program under the county, which follows the state protocol, they're required to have certain spacing, tables and chairs for spacing, and they're required to disinfect that room when they leave it. So when they leave it midday, they're leaving it the way it should look the next morning. Right. And it's dis they disinfect it every day. So the issue is when somebody comes in there, even if it's up, we have to make sure we put it back the way it was left. And Ed and his people will come in who are fire department heads and write disinfect it. There's a list, a prescribed yep. list. Yep. You know, or they'll do it when they were in there. Um, I don't know how you handle it with other groups in there. Um, they would have to, I, how I would think it would happen is they would have to pay the, the, as part of the rental of the room or the use of the room, you'd have to cover those costs, whether it's our people cleaning or not. They've got to come in after hours, after that event's over, right. a lot of times at night. Yeah, you would have to have it ready for 8 a.m. in the morning. Right. Is our um, cleaning company? Provide that they, thing, or is it? They would probably do it. They used to do it in the building. Right. Um, so we need to fix at my time. I don't know. Yeah, we need to we need to fix cost for that. Let's let's do a little more digging on that. Find out what that cost would be. Because you're uh, probably talking like in some cases kind of right. Right. Because I know seven a.m. Some of the recovery groups that we're meeting there are now using local churches, which is great for the church because I'm sure they're getting some fees out of it. But the parking issues that they're causing. In those immediate neighborhoods, there's no parking for some of these churches that they're using, so it's a problem. And you're going to have to rely on whoever to put that room back to the same. Well, they'll be required to do it. They will. And if they don't do it, they don't get use of the room anymore. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's there's ways to govern that and control that. I should say not govern, but uh, the fee's going to have to go up to cover the cleaning of it. Well, let's find out what that is, and then we'll circle back and then we can talk about it and see if it's something. You know, with our staffs and see if it's in the fire department or the PW, see, see if we can open it back up. I don't, you know, it's a building in the city that's that's a public building that we're not getting its full use out of. Right. I'd like to see it get back into use. Um, yeah, very few buildings that can be used for that sort of thing. Right. Next item is Atlantic City Electric. Um, this goes to the banners on the on the boardwalk that we've been talking about for quite some time now um just for the, the public's information we we started this banner program last year been a huge success the banners on the boardwalk are look great tim and your, your group did a great job getting them designed and and marketed to local businesses and sponsors and all that uh, this year we were told by atlantic city electric that 
you can no longer have those, those banners on the boardwalk because they are advertisements. We disagree with that characterization. We think it's a sponsorship um, because the very bottom of these banners, it says Calvi Electric or, or whoever, whoever might have purchased it. Um, but for the most part, it says Ventnor City and whatever section of town it's in, St. Leonard's Track, North Beach or whatever. Um, it was a great addition to our boardwalk. So we've been going back and forth with Atlantic City Electric. Um, our plan is to potentially take over those poles so we can own them and maintain them ourselves and put up banners that we want, put up cameras that we want. We were told we can't put cameras on those poles either. Uh, not a very good partnership, I gotta say, with our friends at Atlantic City Electric. Um, so we, we've asked for some information before we do that. We want cost analysis. They're somewhat the last conversation we just had this evening. They're balking at providing some of that yeah. information. They agreed to it in the MOU. Right. I think I repeated that. Yeah. yeah. And now they're saying they're not going to give us that information. So I'm going to have to the communication with that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Mr. Mosco, what are the average yearly maintenance fees? What are the recommended maintenance procedures? Do they look at the whole every six months? They're going to have to provide us the as built plans for the boardwalk rights and associated with the wire. Right. So I'm going to get a ERF to Mr. Moscow personally Good. to inquire about that. Look, we want, we want to partner yeah. with them. We want to do it because we, we get it. Look, you can't advertise on their polls, although they seem to be on every other poll in other municipalities. But the communication is I guess yep. we're trying to clear it up, but we want to go into it with both eyes open, not one hand over. Agreed. So, so we just need all the information so that we're, we know there's no practice. I think Mark said we need to make an informed decision. Exactly. All right. Um, Ultimately, I, I think that it adds a freshness to the whole topic. Agreed. No, it's a, tons of compliments on it. Yeah. So it came out nice. The last discussion item I have is request for support to protect residential and ecological communities on the Jersey Atlantic coast. That's a long way of saying the Pine Lands Preservation Alliance for the last four years, Ed, three or four. Yeah, have come in and from the north side of the pier towards Atlantic City, east side, but everybody called it north, so we'll go with that. And staked out the area at the base of the dune. Right. And what their, their hope is, is that the vegetation on the dunes will grow down the face of that dune, the toe of the dune, and stabilize it better. And it's working. Uh, it's been a good program. What it does is it stops our guys from raking up close to the dune, and you can see how that, that vegetation is coming down. We don't do it on the Margate side because we lose so much beach there in high tides. We really can't restrict that area. Mm -hmm. um, what they're asking for is a letter of support. They're applying for a new grant, and we've been supportive. They've been a good partner with us. Their team comes down in like April, puts the stakes out, um, works with Ed's office, and if you stand on the pier and look north, you can see the difference. Yeah. It, it, it's protecting what we're paying for right. each time we get a dune replacement. So uh, I, I, I'm supporting it. I'm just asking. I didn't want to do it by without your guys no, absolutely. knowing it. So, okay. All right. So I'll first line of defense. So they gave us a draft letter. I'll put it together with the rest of them. So uh, and that's all I have for discussion, right? Okay. All right, it's our first public portion. We will open this up to any items that were discussed on tonight's agenda um, that we've already spoken about this evening. We need a motion to open the public. Motion to open the public. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So if you'd like to speak either on the Zoom meeting or here in person about anything on our agenda tonight, please come up to the microphone, state your name, and tell us what you want to talk about. Go online first. Jim, is there anybody out there who wants to make any comments on the items we're discussing tonight? Is there anybody out on Zoom who wishes to speak a question on any of the items that were spoken about or being voted on tonight? Please make yeah. yourself known within Zoom by raising your hand or within the chat feature and you'll be recognized. Uh, Michael Saywitz, if you rec if you see me, I would like to speak briefly. Yeah. I don't know if you can hear me. We can. Yep. Very good. First of all, I appreciate everything all you do for our community. It's my first time attending one of these meetings. I don't envy you. Um, but I appreciate you, so thank you. Um, I was gonna talk about the parking issue. Maybe it's not appropriate to talk about it now, and I should wait till you bring it up again.
but I have communicated with both commissioners about this issue. So I think you pretty much know where I stand. I still have a problem of a vehicle that's been abandoned in front of my property at 12 North Wyoming for almost four weeks now. And it goes to the heart of this very issue. So I'm not asking you to address that tonight, but the, it's a very important issue about leaving commercial vehicles on, on the streets for an extended period of time. So I'll leave it at that. I, I just also wanted to comment on the Airbnb. I have a next door neighbor who has an Airbnb and it's a serious problem. They bring in uh, 15 people into a small house for a one or two night party. Uh, people get drunk. They're making noise at four or five in the morning. And I think if you went to a model more closely resembling Margate, you would get more families and less problematic issues. And I'll leave it at that. Okay. Um, yeah, thank you for your emails. And I, we did, I did share them with the police chief and the other commissioners. Um, I think one suggestion as, as we are cleaning up the overnight parking of commercial and, and sort of separating the areas so that it can be enforced. But I would say the abandoned vehicle can be a separate call that you can make and report it. And that could be handled um, separately from waiting for this ordinance. So the abandoned vehicle would, 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 would yeah. be a parallel, would be something separate from a, a commercial vehicle overnight park. So you can call that in any, you can call and make a, a complaint on that anytime. So I can now call the police and say the, the vehicle is abandoned and they will either ticket or tow it? Yes. yes. I thank you very much. Have a great day. And uh, I appreciate being part of the community. Thank you. Thanks, Michael. Yep. Anyone else on Zoom, Jim? Yes, I have a T. Parsons who wishes to speak. Uh, yes, Timothy Parsons, uh, 103 North Dorset. And I had a question about the Open Container Act. Uh, as near as I can tell, it's basically to allow the BYOB restaurants to, to allow dining on their, their sidewalks where they have tables. Uh, I guess first is is that the uh, intent, and then second, going through the language, it seems a little um, ambiguous in a couple areas. It talks about carrying, and uh, you know it's ambiguous to me whether the they're allowed to drink outside the light the restaurant or whether or not it's specifically limited to say directly in front of the restaurant that's licensed. And I guess my concern is I don't want people wandering up and down the sidewalk in front of my house. Uh, which it, where I live is a commercial district. I understand that, but I don't want them wandering up and down in front of the house, carrying uh, open containers of alcohol, drinking, being rowdy. So I, I guess my concern is, can you tighten up that language a little bit possibly? Definitely the intent is to just on the property in front of the commercial business that is, that is the restaurant that is allowing them to bring their own, their own alcohol. Um, you okay with, you yeah, think that's tight I, enough, Mark? I believe, that... I believe the language is pretty clear on that. Okay. And, and as long as that's, uh, as long as that's understood and, the, and that's the way the city intends to enforce it. Yeah, we, we don't, it is not authorizing people to walk down the street with, with open out. And in fact, it says we prohibit highways, parking lots, public pier, beach, yeah, things of those. Okay. Areas. So yeah, okay. you, you, re you read it correctly. The intent is to put us in compliance with outdoor seating when BYOBs are in yeah. Okay. And that's what I, that's what I thought. I just didn't see it say, you know, sitting at the table or, or on the property of the restaurant or directly in front of it just said outside, which is kind of ambiguous to me, but okay. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else on Zoom, Jim? I see some things popping up there. Uh, Nancy Walker has a question. Hey, Nancy. Yeah. Hi, Nancy Walker, 5601 Edgewater Avenue. Um, myself and Nicole are on here to talk about a safety issue that's not on the agenda. All so, right, so we're going to, Nancy, we'll ask you to come in at the end. We, we okay. save this portion for the items that are on the agenda. So if you can okay. stick around well, with I, a little bit. I did have a question about the commercial vehicles and the trucks parking all the time on the street because we live on Edgewater Avenue. So if that rule is gonna be changed, who do I call the police and report that it's there? The non-emergency number as yes. I've done in the past? Yes, 
Yeah. Okay. And can you clarify again what the hours are that they are not allowed to be parked on the street? 9 p.m. to 6 a.m. Correct. So it's commercial vehicles that are vehicles that are used for a commercial purpose that are not residents. So you have to be uh, at the what will happen is when you call it in, right. the location and the resident where they live. Uh -huh. If that person happens to live on Edgewater or nearby, at that right. point, they're not going to, they're allowed, they'll be allowed to park their commercial vehicle there. Oh, they're allowed to park on the if street. They are a resident. Yeah. If they're a resident. So if even you live, if, even you if wanna... it's an obstruction, if it's a big ladder truck with ladders on it, uh, and you. So, ma'am. And if yeah. you let us speak for one minute, we'll try and okay. explain this to you. Go ahead. So the purpose of this is if you own a business and you have mm -hmm. a home in Ventnor, right. you're allowed to park your truck at your property as long as it's of a certain size. Right. Okay. If you're a contractor working in the neighborhood, you cannot leave your truck there overnight. Right. So, so there, there are professionals that are also entitled to park their vehicles. Uh, we're going to limit it to two. So that you don't have someone that has like a commercial parking lot created. Around. Okay. And and do they are they supposed to park in their driveway first? Yeah. We can't we can't um, we can't legislate that they park in their driveway or actually that they park in any particular spot or even nearby their home. It's hard. It's it. You, they wouldn't. They we we couldn't charge them with not parking in a driveway. In other words, so we're going to encourage them in the ordinance as good neighbors to park in their driveway first, but we can't really enforce that. So basically it's only for contractors. It's not for people that might have a business right. and they park four trucks on Edgewater. Correct. It's someone that, and, and so if they own it, if there's a construction business and they're parking more than two vehicles on Edgewater, then they would have to thin that number of vehicles out. If there, there's a lot of construction going on in Edgewater, there's two homes under construction at least. Yeah, I agree. It's All right. Important. If we'll take like that. you said, you're a contractor and you have a pickup and that's you bring it home. Work, yeah. Right. You, you bring one to take her right. But but two with the yeah. parking issues we have. Like you're right. We're talking about residents, so it's not like it's not like it's their right, even as professional a parking. Yeah, yeah. I, agree. I agree. You have one vehicle. All yeah. right. We'll take, we'll, we can we can we can we can iron that out. Um, right. So it's not right. We're not trying to create a commercial parking around a residential neighborhood. So, so that might thin that out. And, and on Edgewater, like I said, there's a number of new homes going up. If those, if those contractors are leaving them overnight, those are the ones that you can call on yeah. and they'll find out whether they're, whether they're residents or not. We're also going to look at doing a, a parallel to that, um, trailers. And uh, some contractors leave trailers overnight. And we want to try to restrict that as well. They have to be on the property. If you want. They have to be right. They have to be on the property. They can't be in the street. Edgewater is one of the most narrow streets that we have. It's a very, it's a very difficult to navigate. Um, you're, you're kind of taking your mirrors and your in harm's way when you yeah. park on Edgewater. <laughs> That's true. You know that. Um, are dumpsters allowed right now? No, dumpsters are not allowed. Be all off the street. On the I saw one on the street. It's not allowed on the street. There might be one or two in town. Yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll text you. Yeah. This, is, <clears throat> this is Michael Sayowitz. Can I add one more quick question, if sure. you don't mind? I, I, are you going to address in the revised legislation the issue of leaving vehicles in the same spot for an, an extended period of time? I understand having a homeowner who leaves his vehicle on the street overnight because he goes to work the next day. But as in the case of the vehicle in front of my home, the, the truck was is there now three and a half weeks or more. So if the, if the vehicle is licensed, you can't control how long it stays on the street. And if it's within the size of a, what, right. it, what we're trying to narrow this down to, which is more of a smaller pickup trucks and one personal vehicle now, an abandoned, you can call in an abandoned vehicle. I think it's three days is the, is that measure. Okay. I mean, I, I think that's a problem because people are going to start using the streets as their parking lots and, and leaving their vehicles. So I would ask you to consider that as part of the legislation, that there's a limit in how long you can leave a vehicle in one spot. 
You talking about commercial vehicles, or just any vehicles? No, commercial vehicle. Okay. Yeah. It, 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 but it, somebody's yeah. home and they park their car out in front of their house. You can't. Yeah. I'm not talking about a. I'm not talking about a, a car. I'm not talking but about if, a. If it's SUV. a commercial vehicle that is permitted. It's the right size, and the person lives there. They can park their car out in front of their home. Right. It might have signage on it, but they're 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 have every right, just like a person who's a. What if it's a block away? I'm just curious. I mean, where, where do you end it? Well, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying the street is a public park. We're trying not, to limit it. You have to understand the street is parking for everyone, not just the people who live right in front of that portion of the street. So I, I, I appreciate we're trying that. to help with the, con the construction vehicles that are prevalent through the city, especially in the summertime, and they're being left overnight. That's really the goal of this is to, is to eliminate most of them, the larger ones and to allow the ones that are for our residents that happen to own a business that they have a commercial vehicle for. And which perfect for one is not necessarily, I mean, we can't let perfect get in the way of better. Yeah. So we're, we're trying to make improvements. Thank you. Anyone else on Zoom? Uh, just one thing, uh, Nancy Walker just wanted clarification um, that the commercial vehicles includes both cars and trucks, correct? Vehicles used for commercial purpose. Yes, they have a commercial tag on it. Yes. Okay. Uh, anybody else on Zoom wishes to speak, please make yourself known and you'll be recognized. Uh, no one else. Thank you, Jim. Anyone in the, in the chambers want to speak? Seeing none, motion to close. Second the motion. Correct. Only on items that we're we'll talking about. We'll have another. We'll have a later. public thing at the end. Thank you. Motion to close. Motion to close. Second. All in favor. Aye. Public portion is closed. Also need a motion to close the workshop portion and call to order the regular meeting. Motion to close the workshop portion and open regular meeting. A second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Okay. Call to order our regular portion of our meeting this evening. On the first item on the agenda is approval of minutes from May 12th, both regular and executive. Can I get a motion for that, please? Motion to approve minutes as described. A second. All in favor? Aye. We have to do that by consent. It doesn't matter if they do all, just do a roll call or just call in favor. Yeah, we usually do a roll call. But... Okay. Well, then we'll do roll call. Roll call, please. Commissioner Creeble? Yes. Commissioner Langria? Yes. I need a motion to approve the minutes of May 26th. Again, both regular and executive. Motion to approve minutes as described. A second. Roll call, please. Commissioner Kriebel? Yes. Commissioner Landgraf? Yes. And we're going to table the June 9th until mayor's All right. We have no ordinance introductions. We need a to open, we need a motion to open a public hearing on ordinance 2022-101. The ordinance of the Vent city of Ventnor, County of Atlantic, State of New Jersey, amending and supplementing Chapter 47, Sewer and Water Utility. Motion to open public hearing on Ordinance 010. I second the motion. Roll call, please. Commissioner Creeble? Yes. Commissioner Landgraf? Yes. Okay. We're open to the public on this ordinance. Is there any comments either online or on the hybrid uh, Zoom call or in the chambers? Anybody in Zoom wishes to speak a question on Ordinance 2022-010, please make yourself known. You'll be recognized. Seeing none, motion to close. Motion to close. Second, all in favor? Aye. Okay. In a motion to adopt Ordinance 2022-010. Motion to adopt Ordinance 010. Second, roll call, please. Commissioner Kriebel? Yes. Commissioner Landgraf? Yes. Need a motion to open the public hearing on ordinance 2022-011. That is chapter 161, alcoholic beverages section nine prohibitions. Need a motion to open the public. Motion to open public hearing ordinance 011. A second, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, public hearing is now open on ordinance 2022-011. Any comments on Zoom or in the chambers? Does anybody on Zoom wishes to speak a question on Ordinance 2022-011? Please make yourself known to be recognized. No one. Thanks, Jim. Seeing none, we'll motion to close. Motion to close. 
Second, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Need a motion to adopt ordinance 2022-011. Motion to adopt ordinance 011. Second, roll call please. Commissioner Creeble? Yes. Commissioner Langria? Yes. And we're gonna table 12, correct? Yes, sir. Yeah. Need a motion to adopt ordinance, no, never mind. Second, we have right. both of them. Mm -hmm. Motion to open <laughs> public hearing on ordinance 2022-013 which is uh, amending supplementing chapter 214, section 21, fire prevention. Motion to open public hearing on ordinance 013. Second, all in favor? Aye. Public portion is open on ordinance 2022-013. Anybody in Zoom wish to speak a question, ordinance 2022-013, please make yourself known and you'll be recognized. Anybody here in the chambers want to speak on this one? Please make yourself known. Seeing none, we'll ask for a motion to close. Motion to close. Second, all in favor? Aye. Aye. A motion to adopt ordinance 2022-013. Motion to adopt ordinance 013. Second, roll call, please. Commissioner Creeble? Yes. Commissioner Langrand? Yes. A motion to adopt by consent resolutions 2022-210 through 220. Motion to adopt resolutions as described. Second, roll call, please. Commissioner Creeble? Yes. Commissioner Landgraf? Yes. Al, could you provide our, our bills and payroll? Yes, uh, the bill list for this period was $3,683,128.93. And the payroll for this period was $610,000. $425.63. I need a motion to approve bills and payroll as indicated by our CFO. Motion to approve bills and, bills and payroll. Second, roll call, please. Commissioner Creeble? Yes. Commissioner Landgraf? Yes. Our announcements and safety report are on our agenda. Um, any commissioner comments or reports? Um, I just want to thank the, uh, the, the fire department and the police department fighting the, uh, a, um, a large structure fire um, I started following it as it began. It was very difficult to stop. Um, we called in uh, Margate and Longport and had to basically shut down the city between the theater and four blocks in the center of the, of the town at a very busy time. Yeah. Um, crowd formed. Um, and in the midst of, of battling this fire, um, and shift shift change in the police department where we had two shifts on, luckily, um, called them all in to, for, for traffic and crowd control. We had a burglary in progress, which we have seen. So the police department had to shift from crowd control to pursuit and apprehension, which they did, and um, all within the span of a few moments. So it was, um, uh, we also had, uh, our OEM assistant there who was um, helping move the vehicles. We had public works trucks blocking traffic on streets that came by at a moment's notice. Yep. We had uh, class one young kids right out of, well, they look like babies to me, but they're, <laughs> they're, they're blocking traffic across, again, across from, almost from Bay to Ocean, four blocks of the middle of the city. Um, no injuries. Um, and uh, and as complete a uh, an attack and knockdown of fires can be done in that difficult situation. So I just want to thank all those departments for different professionalism and keeping on task uh, with a lot of things, a lot of moving parts. Yeah, I agree. Complete. Uh, these guys did a fantastic job. I followed it as well. And, and both chiefs were not working at the time. Sorry right. to interrupt. No. Both chiefs came in within a matter of moments from yep. their respective homes. Um, which you'd expect that you don't always get. So. Right. No, it was a fantastic job across the board. Um, if that, that could have taken that whole block. Easily. There was, yeah, easily taken that whole block. First of all, the wind was blowing in a very advantageous direction. It was blowing hard. Yeah. It was blowing right out of the bay. Right. So it kept it a little bit controllable from going side to side. But, you know, we could have lost the theater. We could have lost more yeah. down, down that road, all the way down to Mr. Gordo's. Right. Um, just a really good job. I was in Brigantine last night and talked to their mayor and thank those guys for doing it. But as fire departments do, they all do the backup. Right. It was all backfill from Atlantic City to Brigantine. That's right. 
So Atlantic City was covered. Yeah. was covered in Atlantic City. We had right. We had the Atlantic City plant putting water on two different direct. It was a it was it was a serious fire that took longer to yeah. to to control than it would than I've seen in the past. We're hopeful that the Sacco building is salvageable. Right. Um, talking with Jimmy this morning, he thinks that the insurance company is going to want to try and get him to save it, which we want to open sooner than later. So that's the, the better option. Um, obviously, the, the U Magno building is down. There is not a U Magno <laughs> anymore. Um, yeah. And that was done. American demolition is here two o'clock in the morning. Right. On Saturday, or Sunday morning, starting that because the wall was in danger. It was the right thing to do. Yeah, absolutely. It was in danger of collapse. So. Yeah. Good work by, again, teamwork all the way through from construction all the way up the ladder. That's right. Construction was here. Public and, works and, guys did a good job. Yeah, it, was a, it was a big, it was, it was, it was all hands on deck. It was. <laughs> so, thank you. That's kind of all I have. I don't really have too much more. The headquarters is coming along great. We got all our doors and windows. Yeah, that's great. In, so we'll be siding and getting that thing going. Cheap rocks going up inside, I think, already, right? Okay. Okay. Reminder about the fireworks on July 3rd. Um, also, the pier will be open on July 4th for viewing of Margate and Land City fireworks. I did hear that Borgata and Harris are not doing fireworks this year, so it'll all be along the beachfront. Great. Um, so you'll see some from, yeah. I think, Tropic Canada does them on the beach. They'll do theirs on Saturday night because they typically do, right? I guess they'll do theirs on Saturday. Mm -hmm. But then again, on the 4th, they do the big one. And then Margate Mothers does theirs on, on the 4th as well. So here will be open to the public that night all the way out to the end. No fishing will happen after 6 p.m. I know there were some posts about the lifeguard beaches that were guarding, and you yeah. handled that right on the right on. Yeah, and I, I'll, I'll just follow up. There were some questions about um pages or beaches that are not covered and uh, historically we have uh we only had eight beaches uh uh, include, uh uh that were that were guarded we have 11 now um, we are in the sort of that that flux time between when uh the weather starts getting nice and kids get out of class we had um 18 candidates and so we're a little shorthanded we had 18 candidates for uh rookies this year 16 passed and um, three went to other uh, municipalities. So, uh, so we have about um, 13 new recruits this year. Um, so that should um, bring us up to speed for uh, a good- I, I, know, I know one that'll be back in August that wants to help. Okay. <laughs> Evan's coming home for August for three weeks. So. <laughs> I, we're not to the point where we're shooting up my generation, but- <laughs> Guards? No, no. But we have a couple. <laughs> anything else? No. Marie, you got anything? I can hear you. Beach mats. Um, just an update on our beach mats. Um, we've we've put out the ones that we purchased for this year. Um, we try to spread them through out through through the beach access points. Um, we are reevaluating the use of these beach mats. We are being uh, we're in litigation or it's the threat of litigation. Um, now can't get too much into that because someone slipped on sand on a beach mat. Yeah. Really annoying. So um, that's, we're going to reevaluate that. Uh, I'm on the fence on these things. You know, they're, they're there for elderly and people have trouble walking on sand to help them. And now we're, people are suing us because they're there. So it's a little frustrating. You try and do something. Yeah. I, nice. I, I think they're a benefit. I mean, I, I walk down the, over the dunes on them. I think it's, it makes it much easier. For they are. Your, with but, all your gear. But, but then you've got someone who slipped on sand that happened to be on a sandy beach. Right. Got it. And we're being litigated. So I don't want to get into that, but mm -hmm. it's, it's frustrating. A couple more sections has the staff through Yeah, we have to clean them. We have to clean them with the wind. If you're, you're in an outdoor environment, we have we bought new equipment to do it, blowers and, and brooms, the, the power brooms that sweep them off. Um, so we're gonna 
make an effort to, to clean them and do what we can. In other words, it's not simply just a mat. No, it's not just throwing down a mat. <laughs> so the other aspect of it is, you know, we pay for these, we try to pay for these through various means of funding that we that come to the city from NJDEP permitting applications. When someone develops along the coast, either the bay or the beach, and they don't provide public access to their property, the DEP makes them provide donations to the municipality they're in, and we use those funds, we try to use those funds as much as we can to pay for these the showers and the beach mats. Right. That's why we don't do them all at once. They're three or four thousand dollars per beach mat walkover. Yeah. So, so we will we will try to do more as we can, but we also are evaluating what to talk to our GIF and insurance carriers. Anything else? I, I just want to, I don't want to put you on the spot, but I thank Tina for coming in, our, our new oh, rec yeah. director, and she, uh, for coming in. I know there's some things on her that are on our agenda that affect her department. And uh, thank you again for uh, having a, uh, I look forward to a great summer and lots of pickleball. <laughs> <laughs> there's more than pickleball. No, there's not. <laughs> That's the only thing that we do. There's we're, tons of more. <laughs> Tina's doing great. She's joining us. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Yeah. Thank you. Anything else? Anything else we missed? I don't think so. All right. We'll open it up one last time for public comment on any item. I get a motion to open the public. Motion to open public comment. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Sir, come on up to the microphone and state your name, name and, and address. address. Sing a song. My name is Larry Metzman, and I live at 109 South Harvard. Our good fortune has allowed us to be here in town for 39 years, and I want to first compliment the uh, management of Ventnor. Some things have been going on in the last few years that are wonderful. Thank you very much. Thank you for that. The problem that I'm here to address is to ask you, how do I take the next step or where do I go? Um, beach access on Harvard Avenue. The wind has blown the sand up on the walkway or the walk through between, supposedly between the dunes, okay, uh, to the point where the sand is piled up pretty much as high as the dunes, okay? And I have some pictures to show you if you're interested. I use the same beach access. I, Which are why? Yeah. So I live on Harvard. We don't. Both of us live on Harvard Avenue. <laughs> Wonderful. And you maybe, well, you see, the difference is that we're in our 80s and um, climbing up that hill was no problem when I was in my 30s and nor my wife in the 30s. But I thought that by going over to Public Works, first I called, the people there are wonderful, the gals are great. Uh, I wasn't getting very far, and it's Barbara, who's a sweetie told me, come by and see Mr. Stinson. And I came by, of course, she told me he's there in the morning. He didn't happen to be there. When I went there, I asked for a call back, never got a call back. Email address, telephone number, nothing. Okay. I know the group is busy. They have a lot of things going on. <clears throat> we pay a lot of taxes, buy beach badges. I want to be able to use the beach. Sure. I can't get to the beach. They, they used to be a straight path and then the mats. Now it took two mats to get up from the beach to the top of the hill. The fences that were there before are pretty much buried by sand. <clears throat> I'm no genius, but it seems to me that a couple of guys with, a couple, with some shovels or a, a little cat machine could level that down so that we can get to the beach right so we we do that and we were very early in the season so as of we, we're going to start that procedure on all the beach walkovers not just yours we're going to start that process on monday and we will go through each of them and excavate them out and try and get them down where they're more accessible um is there a beach mat at harvard yeah, this is Ed Stinson right here. There is. Oh, that's hello. Nice <laughs> to meet you, sir. This is your life. I, was, I asked the secretary to tell you that we would be out there, uh, but the issue with Harvard, as as several of the beach paths down this end, uh, the, the dune has has filled up, 
which is, is what it's supposed to do. What it's supposed to do. But it's built up not just on the path, it's built up adjacent to the path. So on, on the Atlantic City side of that path, the dune is higher than that split rail fence. So when we go in, which we did already early in April, we went in and we hit every beach path. But if I dig that down, we dig that down to where the and Army Corps be. built, correct, at the bottom of that split rail, you are left with a cliff mm. of dune on that side, which I can't leave. Right, that's that's a danger that it collapses. But even if I dig down a little bit, which is what we did last year, the first wind blows the sand from the dune that has built up next to the path right onto that pitch. And then I'm back trying to dig out the blue map because now I have half the dune on top of it. I, I'll tell you what, what our answer is, what, what we're trying to do. We've applied to the DEP for a permit that would allow us to knock down that pile of sand that mm -hmm. is above the, the design template of the dune. Right? <laughs> but they didn't give us a permission. Yet. So I can't do it or else they're coming. So I, I can't do that until we have that DEP permit. Jail. We're asking for the permit and, and we'll keep the posted. But until I have that, I don't have a solution. I understand the concern. The best solution that we came up with right now is to put the map up and over. I do bring the machine, like you said, but I try just to level it out so that the map's not on this angle. But other than that, I, I don't have a good answer for it. But I heard you. I asked the ladies to, to let you know that we were out there. Um, but I, I apologize. The message for that. I got was that the maps are there. True. Still doesn't help trying to get up yeah. to the level in order to go down. I, I'm sorry. I don't, I don't have a good solution. If we take the map back and I dig that path out to where the Army Corps built, where it was meant to be. Yeah. A, I have that clip. I cannot leave that. I'm not allowed to go on the other side and knock it down. Yet I don't have that term. So I can't do that. So the best option that I've got is to try to level it out where it is so I don't have this clip. Down. Thank you for the work that you're doing. My question is what can the citizens and taxpayers do to help you get permission through the doctor? Right away. Sean Larratt. I, I don't know that there's <laughs> old already. I'll get to be even older if I <laughs> so we, we have an application pending with the DEP uh, that is asking permission to knock that that to to lower the accreted sand adjacent to the pass so that we we can avoid this. I, I, I don't know who I don't I don't know that there's anything you can do. Yeah, New, Jer New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection. Which is located where? Up in Trent. 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 So, Mr. Metz, Metzman, is it? Metzman. Metzman. M-A-N. Okay. Um, one of the things I might suggest, and, and it's how I get down to the beach, I go to the north side of the pier, but it, I know it's an extra block for you to walk down, and you got to walk back. Because at Cambridge Avenue, I think there's a little better walkway there. Yes, that's, what we, that's, that's, what we, that's a little easier. It's not as, not as filled in with sand. Um, there's also, you can go out the pier and go down the steps, but that might be also, if you're carrying things, it's a pain in the butt. I will say this, if you call our lifeguards, I was gonna say, and I'm throwing this right right in Mr. Mr. Kriebel's lap, yeah. they will come get you. <laughs> oh, that'll go over big with my wife, right? Yeah, if you can- No, you're a big shot. Tell them you're a big shot. You so gotta they, ride down to the beach. <laughs> so my wife and I are always trying to get you. I understand, I, I understand. I completely uh, understand. And we're taxpayers that, as well. that deserves a ride in the Gator, right? So the, 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 so yeah, so we do do offer that service. We call the beach patrol. I am looking at, I was just about to mention that I'm looking at where Harvard, what they would probably have to do though, is to take you to pick you up and take you to a different beach or on the boardwalk. They could bring them down to that and they, take they you down to... and around. And then we do it for handicapped and seniors yep. all the time. We do it all the time. It's, it's yep. a busy service. Sometimes you'll see okay. the most senior yeah. chief of the beach patrol doing it himself. Yeah. Chief Bergman, will, I've seen him do it. <laughs> yep. So if you call. Well, that's something I hadn't thought of. But if you call, they'll come. Thank you kindly. And got to get you to the beach. 
please do continue to do the kind of things that are making Benton better than it ever was. Thank you. Appreciate that. We'll work on that path. Anyone else? Hi. Call back. I apologize. I had emails. I had COVID early in the month. I'm sorry. So my I'm name sorry. is Marlon Majoy. I live at six six one eight Ventnor Avenue, and I had uh, parking issues. For right. Everybody. Yep. Yeah. And I know the last time we spoke, which was April. This yeah. is my third meeting in a row because my son was inducted last. Right. Week. So, yeah. So, and here we come. And I, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I I apologize. I did get your email, and I I was I I did have COVID. That's why I was not at the earlier meeting. And it, did take me out for a couple of weeks, so I'm paying catch. Yeah. Sir, yeah. sir, I, I was out with COVID, and I, I am just catching up. And I think there was some confusion about what you had thought we had said about that parking not being being eliminated. We're not eliminating any parking meters on on Ventnor Avenue. No, no. And I, I thought I sent that in an email. The, the what you have there is a place to park where in a driveway of your own. Is that what you were talking about? Yeah. That that drive that that curb cut that you have is um, is also sort of out. It's now home to my new electric cart. Okay, fits perfectly. Right. So so what you're doing is flying under sort of an or, uh, uh, a um, an ordinance in a way that um, we we'll, that the city allows residents to park within their own curb cuts if the parking is busy. It's kind of like your own spot in a way we're not going to we're not going to we're not going to ticket you for parking well, i got two you know, tickets for it so far so i talked to all the guards or you know the police officers whatever the, the, plat, the new police yeah the yeah summer special and they're you know slowly understanding that oh, okay okay right so they they ticketed your car in front of your own driveway mm -hmm. they're not unless someone calls the complaint they don't right yeah supposed to do that. right so they're super nice we can work on that, but I, I think there's also an issue about the, the driveway itself. It's not really, it's- Well, when I ask them specifically, the, um, it's, it's if they think of the driveway, driveway, they do. I don't know how I got them the tickets, but I paid them. Right. So you were talking about just that cutout right there. Yeah, there, well, that's the homeowner's responsibility to have that. Um, but the, so the question, I, I'll circle back with the chief on tomorrow, um, but the, is the driveway a driveway or is it? A, it a, was a driveway when I bought it. It was a shared driveway right. uh, between Dr. Moen's office and myself. Right. And um, is this go to parking in the back? Yeah, there's two garages in the back. There's two garages. I have one. He has one. Right. So it's a it's a very narrow drive. It's it is barely six. It is. Why? They told me they got their Cadillac back there. I find it hard to believe. Yeah. yeah. But they that's what carefully. They a newer Cadillac or an old one? Old I, it was an old one. Really? Weren't they like boats? Yeah. Yeah, I don't, it's very, I don't see it. It looks like a driveway for an alleyway. It, it, it looks it looks like an alleyway and a half. All right, so we'll get to the bottom of it. I apologize for not getting back to you sooner. I, so anybody that doesn't understand my situation, I never had to pay for parking before, and now I do pay for parking to live at my own house because parking meters went up everywhere. We're mostly residential there, but there's um, Dr. Moen's office. like. Out right. of the four duplexes, there's Dr. Mullen's office there. Right, but to be fair, it's mixed use. It's not residential. I mean, I never knew it wasn't residential. I thought it was resident. That's I mean, the, there's so the, that's the zone is a commercial zone, zone is a commercial zone. But I know that two blocks over from me, Barbie's, no restrictions there. That's not residential. Barbie's is what? That's a hair salon. It's two two streets over. Right. Right. There's no restrictions there. No. There's only one, but your block, your entire block is mixed use, zoned mixed use, not residential. So that's why there's- But that, all I'm saying is there's other blocks that are mixed zone or mixed whatever. They have apartments and- On Ventnor Avenue. On Ventnor Avenue. There's one building. There's one building that has a, an, an office in the base of it. And that may be- So Maria just reminded me that when you were out for a couple of weeks, so yeah. there is- a, discussion on changing how we do it there. Okay. So bear with us. I will. I will. We'll I just want to point out the discrepancies. I will ask them to, to 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 pause that until we can get to the bottom. All right. All right. I really don't want to come every month, but I mean these are fascinating meetings and you do a great job. It's twice a month. It's twice a month. <laughs> are you kidding? You so, missed one. I've been missing meetings and I didn't even know. Oh. Well, well thank you. All right. We'll circle back. 
Anyone else? Jim, is there anybody in Zoom that wants to speak? I know we had the Walker, Ms. Walker. Yes, Ms. Walker, Ms. Jacoby, uh, you wish to speak? Miss, uh, yep, I'm Nicole Jacoby. Hello, everyone. Um, myself and my husband, Lambros, live on Edgewater Ave with our three-year-old son. We've lived here for the last nine years. Um, we're local business owners and year-round residents. Uh, thank you for opening the forum to the public today. Um, I'm here today with a few of my neighbors because Edgewater Avenue has become increasingly more dangerous. Uh, it's to the point where I can't even have my three-year-old son outside. Um, there have been numerous altercations between adults and even adults and minors due to the excessive speeding on this street caused by lack of signage or lack of speed bumps. Um, if you may be aware that between Dorset Ave and Surrey Ave, there are zero stop signs which allows people to use Edgewater Avenue as a freeway. Um, more frequently than not, uh, people are driving between 40 and 60 miles an hour down this street. I don't even know if stop signs will work at this point because they're so used to flying down the road. I think that a speed bump uh, would be the most effective fix, although I don't know if that's possible. In addition to that, the one-way signage is lacking. Um, it should certainly be painted on the street as well. People driving the wrong way down the street has become worse and worse over the years. Um, we're very excited about the new businesses just a few doors down from us on Dorset Ave, but our concern is that this issue will only grow with the more traffic and more visitors here. And uh, I would love to invite someone from the city to come out and evaluate uh, this street and the current dangers it poses for all who live there, here, especially my three-year-old son. Okay, thank you. Um, I actually frequent the street. I rent a garage there. So I do see some of the issues and I have seen cars going the wrong way to, to loop around with some of the side streets. Um, what I'll ask Ed to do is to, to look at the signage there about for one way signage on Edgewater that blocked from Dorset to Surrey. Um, see if we can bolster that a little bit. The, the so speeding I, I is the, like the bigger with, issue. Uh, Ms. Mr. Kobe, one, one second. I, yep. Our city engineers trying to answer some of your comments. So I'll get together with the police chief and take a look out there. I have met with him before and we posted additional um, one way signs, uh, but I will get with him again and see if anything else. You throw up some speed limit signs too, maybe? I'll make sure of those speed limit signs. I, I would bet it won't warrant stop signs just because of the amount of traffic that comes through there. Yeah, and speed bumps aren't illegal. Are, are... <clears throat> You can't put speed speed bumps on a residential street. Uh, I don't without a lot of a, a lot of approvals or the speed bumps. The, the what we typically call the speed bumps, the narrow humps. Um, um, they you cannot do. You can do table tops, uh, yeah. speed humps. Right. They call them. Yeah. Um, and and again, I, I'll, I'll discuss. I think one step that the chief typically does when we have complaints about speeding is we put up that. That uh, radar sign. Yeah, right. So, so we, we, yeah, we have a movable radar sign that checks. I think I appreciate. I, I I know that it seems like they're going forty to sixty, but we can we have a we have a a, a we have a, a speed sign that can go into stealth mode and, and keep track of the actual um, pattern and the speeds that vehicles are going. And it, it, it's a different perception, but we will we we'll, I agree. I think it's a it's a it's a problematic street especially when when you see people coming down Oxford and making the right or going the wrong direction down there. Um, um, but the it's a double-edged sword that uh, having a new business is a benefit, but that, that area has always been zoned. And I think, and actually there were re years ago, there were businesses and restaurants on those corners that are just not, that just hadn't been there for decades. Right. So um, it's part of the, the, the double-edged sword of growth, I think, is that um, um, there, I think that's going to be a popular place, but I think it's going to be it's going to only grow. And, but. We will certainly look into it a little further, Mr. Kobe. Thank you. Appreciate your help. All right. Anyone else on Zoom? Anybody else who wishes to speak on any items? Please make yourself known. No, nope, nobody else. Okay. Anyone else in the, in the uh, chambers? Sorry. Okay. With that, motion to close. Motion to close. A second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Public portion is closed. We have no executive session, right?
No. That is correct. Thank Thank you. You. I have a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you all. Thank you. Thanks for coming out tonight. Good night. Yeah.